Hi everyone, I'm Jody Barrows with The Square in a Square. Welcome to our live webinar today on April the 14th of 2021. And I believe that every quilter can make most any quilt, and that includes this beautiful one behind me that we call Jingle Jangle. That's the one that we're going to be teaching today. It's normally a very difficult pattern to make, but as usual, with the square in a square method, it turns almost every quilt into a simple project that most any quilter can make. Now, we call it Jingle Jangle, but I'm going to recommend that if you want different, if you want to view different color sequences and different color ideas for the Jingle Jangle, Pinterest has a million of these quilts on there, all in different colors. And the way that you use your colors is going to create so many different designs. Some that have a heavier motion or circle to them, and then others that are just kind of a faint um, motion in the quilt. And that is all done by colors, and all of them can be done and pieced exactly the way that I'm going to show you today. So if you have any questions, after you go in and look at the different color combinations on Pinterest. And when you go to Pinterest, look up Jack's Chain, and that's where you'll see all these different colors of these quilts. And if you have any questions or need help with your color sequence that you want to do for your Jingle Jangle, then just email us at steve at squareinasquare.com or we have a hot quilting hotline text number that is 817-713 2879. For those of you that are brand new to us and you've never seen one of our webinars before, make sure that you take good notes during your webinars, start a webinar notebook, and if you have joined us through your email and are watching the webinar that way, you can go back in and watch our previous free webinars that we've had this year of 20. 21. And also when you take good notes in your notebook, you'll know which webinar to go back to and watch when you're wanting to see something in the way that we do it. So keeping a notebook and keep, keeping good notes is a wonderful, wonderful thing to learn and to do and to apply when you're watching our webinars. I try to put in as much content and skill and knowledge as I possibly can when I'm teaching a quilt. I don't want you just to learn how to make that quilt, but I want you to learn skills that you can apply to anything that you're piecing or any quilt that you want to make. So I highly recommend to go back in and watch the past webinars, and you can do that by joining the webinars on our website at squareandasquare.com and signing in with your email, and that gives you access to go back in and to watch all those others. Now, this is a brand new pattern called Jingle Jangle, and you can order those on our website for the Jingle Jangle, and it's going to give you the pattern sequence uh, for the, going to give you the pattern and the color sequence and all the normal things that a pattern give you for the one that we're making today. We're also using our Grande ruler to cut our squares and our strips, and then we're going to be using the original square in a square ruler when we do the trimming, which is actually the jingle and the jangle is what we'll be using with it. Now, the pattern starts out with a nine patch, and that's your main sewing that you're going to do is making all these nine patches. And we do use the nine patch tool to create our nice, perfect, and accurate nine patch units, and we'll show you how to use that when we get started. We're also, in this webinar today, going to tell you about our, our fabric promotion that has just gotten started this week, and we're going to tell you about a couple of future projects that we have planned for the Wednesday webinars and how to use these little scrap pieces that we trim off. We're going to be highlighting that in the next few webinars. And our webinars for April and May will be the second and the fourth Wednesdays of the month. So our next one will be April the 28th. And that's when we'll start in using some of the scraps that we have left over from this quilt into the next quilt. And I've got three different ideas that you can use with these scraps. And we'll talk about that in a little while. Now, before we get actual started on the, the process of how you're going to make this beautiful quilt, it's always good to think about your fabric and how you're going to use the fabric. So the first thing I want to talk about is the red floral that you see. Now, the red floral is in the center 
of every nine patch, no matter what, we've got the red floral in the center. And you're gonna need about a half a yard of fabric for all of these little red squares that are in here. Then we have it in two, in two places on our border. We have a wide outside red floral, and then we have the thinner inside inner border of the red floral. Now, I don't wanna to have to piece that. This is a big queen size quilt, approximately 80 by 90. Um, in there is the size, just to kind of give you a rough idea, which is a queen size quilt. And I wanted my border to all be one piece. I didn't wanna to have to piece it in the middle on all of the sides since the quilt is so large. So the amount of fabric for the red floral is a four yard piece. You're going to need somewhere between two and a half and three yards uh, for the length of the fabric to cut your uh, big borders out of and your smaller borders out of. So that's gonna leave you, and then you're gonna need a half a yard for your little squares. So that's gonna leave you about a half a yard to three fourths of a yard out of that four yards for you to do um, binding or um, if you need some extra because you've decided to make it larger or you cut a couple of pieces wrong or something like that. So for those of you that are very new to um, doing borders or working on quilts, this is what I had left over from my almost three yards. So you can see how this is the fold right here. And so my fabric went out about 20 inches this way. And so I was able to cut two sections of the six inch for my big borders and then two sections of my, I think three inch for my inner borders or two and a half, somewhere in there. And then I had this much left over. So if you don't want your binding on uh, the bias, then this is great to use for your binding or you can use it for your um, inner squares on the inside and then have more of a bulk of your fabric left over. So think before you just jump in and start cutting your fabric, Think about how you're going to use it and how you use it in the quilt. Now, since we do have a fabric promotion going on, some of this fabric, the, the background that you see, which is our tattered and torn, that is our new piece, um, our newest fabric that just came in, the background here, this is the dirt tattered and torn. And we have five different tattered and torns. We have O Glory Blue, we have Freedom Red, we have Kettle Black, which is kind of a dark, dark navy black. Then we have this one that is dirt, and it's the darkest of our light, and then we have the lightest one, which is tan. And all of these backgrounds blend with all of our different fabrics from my fabric collections, and they are ones that we use over and over again in quilts. If you go back in and watch some of our webinars, you'll see other quilts where we've used the dirt and the tan, and you need large yardages of that uh, for your background. So I'll tell you a little bit more about the fabric promotion at the end of the video, but to talk specifically about fabric for this quilt. If you go in and order the kit, then you're gonna get the fabrics, you're gonna get the pattern, and if you choose to get the backing to go with it, which we have chosen the, the red and tan check for the backing, uh, six yards is what you need for it, and if you order it at the same time with your kit, then you get to save $18 on that backing. So that's an $18 savings if you order it as a kit and you order your backing with it at the same time. Now, if you're not going to get the backing now to go for your quilt, then you need to go in and order the different fabrics individually because this is the one that's on sale and you can save $17 if you go in and order it individually. So what you would need to do is to go in and order the Jingle Jingle pattern and then the fabric amount. So get your pencil and paper. This is your first note if you haven't already written something down is that your tan, and a lot of you have uh, ordered checks and stuff before when we've had the check promotion and some of the other fabric promotions. For those of you that are new, whenever I get the fabric in for the first time, that's always the best time to buy it and to get as much of it as you can because those are the fabrics we're gonna be using in all of the quilts coming up and it'll help you save money. So the red and tan check is a two yard piece. Some of you may already have that. The red floral is a four yard, and that will give you, for your binding, it'll allow you to cut your borders the lengthwise. And then the dirt floral, which is the lightest print here, that one is a one yard. And then our dirt tattered and torn, that's a seven yard piece. So you'll need to have 
seven yards of that one. And then I'm going to show you how to take those bits that we have left over in the trimming and how to use that fabric up in the next quilt that we're going to make. So I'm going to repeat that real quick. Tan and red check, two yards. Red floral, four. Dirt floral is one yard and the dirt tattered is seven and the backing is a six yard piece. So those are the fabric amounts. Now something else that's a little different in the way that I put this pattern together is, is that for each section of nine patches, there's uh, three different nine patch color variations. You have the one with the, all three colors in it. You have the one with just two colors in it. And then you have one with two other colors in it. So each nine pack, patch section is individual on the pattern and it gives you fabric amounts for each one of those. That way if you are doing a different color uh, variation of it, it's easy for you to know, okay, I need 10 strips for this color, I need two strips for this color, and it will help you if you're switching up your colors with your nine patches. And um, um, hopefully that's um, easy and, and good for you to be able to do that. So trying to think ahead for you. Okay, and then in the, um, the red and tan check, we have it in the border, and it is one of our two main colors. We have it in the mixed nine patch, we have it in just a one color nine patch, and then of course uh, the border, and that's the red and tan check on that one. Okay, so let's get started with our project. The main part of the quilt is sewing the nine patches together and you're gonna have three different stratas. So for those of you that are new to that word strata, strata is when you have groups of strips sewn together, that's called a strata. And our strips are cut selvage to selvage, so that strata is gonna be at least 40 inches, maybe up to 44 or 45 inches, depending on the width of your fabric. And so that's how the strips are figured. Now, I always, always, always tell everybody to cut a little, sew a little, cut a little, sew a little. Don't ever sit down and cut all of your quilt out all at once. For one thing, I don't want to stand at the cutting table that long. The second thing is I want to see if the decisions I made with my colors are working. I want to make sure that my sizes are working the way that I want them to. And when I decide that I'm tired of working on this quilt, I don't want a whole bunch of fabric cut that says it has to be this quilt. When I decide that I'm done with it, I've achieved all the fun that I can have out of it, I want to be done with it. I don't want an unfinished project sitting in a box because all of that fabric was cut when I'm satisfied with it. Um, you know, that's why we have so many UFO projects that people have is because they cut the whole thing out and for some reason they don't get back to it. It doesn't look the way they want to. They cut something wrong. They weren't happy with their colors. They they're, be, have become unsatisfied with it for whatever reason. So they box it up in a cute little box and stack it up and say, I'll come back to it later. And we all know that most of those are going in our estate sales and our, our quilt auctions when people go through and clean up our sewing rooms. So have less of that by cutting a little, sewing a little, cutting a little, sewing a little, okay? All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew um, three different color variations together into stratas. And your pattern will tell you the size and how many that you need. So if you look down here at the table, you can see how I have my uh, tattered and torn dirts with my red floral. And those are my center sections for all of my nine patches. And then I have some with the dirt floral and the tattered and some with the red and tan check and the dirt. Now, when you use your nine patch ruler, what the nine patch ruler does is it helps you keep, um, it helps you keep all of your cuts straight. You don't have to go back in and keep doing cleanup cuts. It also tells you with the lines on here when you put it on your fabric, it tells you if all four sides of every square are perfect and where they need to be with every cut. You see, so often we come in with just a normal ruler and we cut, 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 cut all of our sections. And then we pick these up and start trying to sew them together. And you've got maybe some that are too short, some that are too long. You don't know, okay, is this a good one and this one's too long, so that'll work out. Or is this one um, the good one and this one's going to be too short so that's not going to work out so when you use a nine patch tool it just helps you keep your pieces 
more perfect and it helps you work with the pieces that are going to give you success. So as you go in here and cut your sections, I'm going to start stacks. I'm going to have a good stack, a fudgeable stack, and a stack that is too short somewhere, not working, and I'm going to set him over here and that stack is doesn't play well with others. So I'm not going to try to use him in here with the good ones. I'll come back and use him somewhere else, maybe in a border or, or some other uh, situation where I can get him to behave and give him a good successful life dealing with his handicaps, whatever that is. So when you use your tool and you cut, you're going to put this heavy grid line here on the top seam and you'll have a stair step line working on the bottom. And you have these different stair step lines because you can make a two inch all the way up to a 12 and a half inch cut nine patch unit. Now you can use your nine patch tool as a design tool as well as a cutting. So here it says the cut size of the patches. So this is gonna be the cut sizes of my nine patches. And over here, these numbers, they're going to be the cut size of my strips. So let's say that you have a, and so to use it as a design tool, you would pay attention to these two sections of numbers. So let's say I have a jelly roll that's two and a half inches. So I come in here and find the cut size of my strips, two and a half. And I wanna know what size of nine patch it's going to make. If I find my two and a half and stay inside the railroad tracks and come over here, it tells me the cut size of my nine patch is gonna be six and a half inches. So that's great. I know these are the strips I have. I know what size it's gonna be. Maybe I need a nine patch a certain size and I don't know what size of strips. So let's say I need an eight inch cut nine patch. That's kind of hard to figure without, you know, setting down and putting the pencil to the paper. So if I need an eight inch cut, I'm gonna work backwards. And it tells me I need three inch cut strips to get a nine patch to a cut size of eight. So you can see how these are great numbers to use as design tools. So let's go in here and cut with it. We're gonna turn it vertical and the heavy grid line is gonna go on the top seam and the stair step line is gonna go on the bottom. And I'm not working, looking at numbers at all. I'm just looking at lines. So here's my heavy grid line on the top seam. I've already done a nice cleanup cut because I already have that one. And I'm going to slide, I'm gonna look for my stair step line which is right there, and I'm gonna slide it down to where the stair step line is. So I know from here to here is the correct size. My seams and my cutting for here to here is correct because these are lining up perfectly. And I have it inside this little rectangle box, and it's gonna tell me, is this side long enough? Is this side long enough? It's gonna keep it even and parallel and straight as I cut because it's showing me all four sides of each of those squares. And everything is going um, nice into that square. So hand flat, and I'm just gonna make my cut. And if everything's good, then I'm gonna put that in the good stack. The good stack. And I'm gonna keep cutting and working into my piece. Heavy grid line on the top seam, stair step line on the bottom it fits inside the box car or the rectangle and see how it's keeping it straight i'm not going to have to go back in here and do another cleanup cut because as you sew this strip together that's 40 inches long you know you're going to have sections of it where you kind of moved around a little bit with your sewing um, and you'll know immediately if that section um, so here we can see one that's coming up that's not as good so here is my heavy grid line, and here is my stair step line, so I know the center section is good. This one's coming down into the line, but this one up here is dipping in. So when I cut my strip, did my strip move? When I did my sewing here, did I take a little bit bigger seam here that made this smaller? We don't know, but I know right now that this one is not as long as it should be. Now, if it's not more than an eighth of an inch, then it will work. If it's more than an eighth of an inch, then you don't have enough fabric for your seam. So this one is gonna go in a new stack and that's called my fudgeable stack. So when I work with that stack, I know immediately uh, there's something that's not, not perfect, but I can work with it. Okay, now this one starts to get pretty skinny in there. So I'm at the end, I'm just gonna call it good and put it in my scrap um, section. 
So when you go in and cut all your different colors and you get ready to start sewing these together, we pick these up and we wanna make sure that our um, seams match together nicely. And because those lines lined up great, the heavy grid line and the stair step line, all of those seams are matching up nice. Now see how this one is just a little bit short? I know that this one was the handicap one, the one that's a little bit short, but I know it will work. So see how I'm not trying to push and tug that one uh, to make it? And I know, I know which one. These were the good, these were the fudgeable, and these were the ones that aren't going to work, and I'm not going to work with those. So I would sew all the way down and press open, and then we'll put the red check on the other side. And this is one nine patch section. You have color one, color two, and then color three, your red, that is your dominant in your quilt, and then it's going to go into all of the nine patch units that you make. So, up. Question? Okay. Would it be best to overcut the two outer strips so they can be trimmed up later? So the question is, is it better to overcut these outer strips so that they can be trimmed up later? You certainly can. We, we've started teaching overcutting um, to our premium club group um, probably getting close to a year ago now. So um, if you understand that, you can, and then, but then you're going to have to go back in and trim up every one. So unless you're below average on sewing your seams together, I say don't do it. Don't overcut the strips because to me, you're going to have out of this and using the tool and as many as what we need, you're going to be spending a lot of time going in and trimming pieces that off on the end where you overcut. So you'd be overcutting on these ends. And so you're going to have to go back in and trim those up. Or when you get your nine patch block together, you're going to have to go in and trim those nine patches up. And one of the things we want to do is help uh, eliminate, um, um, time issues. We want to be able to make things, you know, faster and more simpler. So, um, I would say that when you sew your strips together, because lots of times when you're sewing long strips together, you think, oh, it's just a long strip and you just do what I say. sew like a jackrabbit, just speeding those strips through. And so they're going to the waver a little bit. I say, if you just slow down a little bit and take a little bit more time to make sure that those are put together, your time-wise is going to be better to not overcut those. Also for the, the number that you need. Um, um, but if you were just making a few and you have a hard time with your seam allowance, then I would say overcut. But if not, I would probably say no on this one. Okay, so hopefully that's a little bit clear. A lot of things on why we do something kind of depends on the, the, the seamstress, um, on how you know, what, what their PPMs are, their personal private measurements, you know, what are the areas that you have complications or trouble with. And so then you want to think about those areas that are your handicaps and do what we call the science of patchwork and improve a, a, upon those and get your, your pieces so that they're workable pieces. So hopefully that, that helps a little bit. Okay, more questions, Steve? No, nope, that's it. Okay. So after you have your nine patches together that are the, um, the main nine patch, meaning that you're going to use a red and a dirt and a red check. So this is the, the main nine patch that you're going to make. And after you have those made, you're going to go in, and this is, um, this is going to be your center square. Your nine patch unit is your center square. So your... Let me turn it so the colors are the same. So then you're going to go in and make your basic squares. And this is your main construction of the quilt right here. Is your nine patches and the sewing of your basic squares. After you have those done, then your quilt just moves very, very quickly. So um, if you're new to sewing a basic square, basically we just put a strip on each side. It has to cover the square. Go back in and watch some videos on uh, sewing a basic square and how we do this actually with long strips. So this one here, these are this is like side three and four. They're the last ones we put on. But like on this one, this was like a long strip. Well, let me just grab these little samples because I'm sure we've got some brand new square in a square viewers. 
Hmm. There they are. Okay, so when you sew a basic square, you're going to put your strip down, face up, and you're going to put your squares on the top, whether they're just a plain square or whether they are your nine patches. You're going to put them on the top, and of course your, your sizing has to be the correct ratio for the size of a center that you've got. And so play like these are your nine patches, and you're just going to put them down on your strip, about a finger space in between. Then you're going to put another strip in the machine, turn it around, don't open these up and just sew them down this side. So here you can see what that looks like. So this was the first side. We turned them around and now we're just sewing down the other side. And so they look like this, except your size and colors are going to be different and this is going to be a nine patch. But this is the sewing of a basic square. Then you cut them apart and you're going to come in here and sew the short side on. So here's like side three, sew them on and then flip them around and put side four on and press them open and you have your basic square. So I went through that pretty quickly, but hopefully you've got an idea for those of you that are brand new to the square in a square. So then when you press, they look like this. Now to get these blocks to jingle and jangle, let's see what we're gonna do. And let's see what we're talking about as a jingle jangle. So here they are trimmed up. These two are the same. And notice how he's kind of tipping one direction and then I want you to look at this these right here and see how he's tipping the other direction so if I put him on top see how this left side has a short um, has the short side and look here how it has the long side so see these are different and I want you to notice how we're gonna lay these out here so one is the jingle and one is the jangle and I'm laying these out so that my red check is on the top and my dirt is on the bottom. And I want you to notice how they, they create this wider wedge here and kind of a rooftop wedge there. So see, this one doesn't fit there because see how they're going the same direction and they don't touch. So you have to look at these pieces that are the same. You want them to go on the same. So here you can see how they're jingling and they're jangling. And this is a row and you're going to put nine of these together. I'm sorry, you're going to put 10 of these together and you're going to make nine rows. So I'm going to scoot those up and we're going to talk about how to trim. So let's say that you're going to make a um, hundred of these, whatever your pattern calls for. You're going to make two stacks. You're going to put 50 in one stack and 50 in the other. Divide them in half, however many um, that you have. And go to your original square in a square ruler. And let's look at it so that we can see what we're going to do. And remember, if you have any questions, you can put them in on the comment section there. Or you can uh, text them to 817-713-2879. Okay? So when you look at your ruler and you're holding it where you can read it, square and a square, if you go to the very top, you're going to see the 60 degree angle. And when you look at the 60 degree angle, there's lines on the right, lines on the left, okay? And then you have the very inside one that touches and makes that little sharp, uh, kind of a rooftop look, kind of a real sharp. And this right here, this is the tip of your 60 and see that fourth of an inch? So this is what we're going to work with. We're going to work with the 60. We're going to keep our eye focused right there at the tip of the 60. And half of your stack, we're going to use the right side. So that means this line of your 60, the very first one. And your other half of the stack, we're going to use the left side. Okay? Now, because this, when you look at your square, this inside here is a 90. So if we're going to put the 60 in here to use it, your 60 lines are going to come in here like this. Your 90 would come in like this, but your 60 is what's going to give it that twist. Now in your reference book, the option 16 is the twist, and that's the one that teaches uh, this version of using the ruler. So I have half of my blocks in one stack, and I have half in the other. So I'm going to go to my 60, and I'm going to use my right side. 
So see how the 60 is right in the tip. I have the right side down over here. And that's really the only thing I'm looking at. I have the fourth of an inch coming off of that point, And I just have this 60. That's really the only thing I'm looking at. There's no other lines right now to help you. Just the 60 in the point and the right side coming down. So as I go in and trim this stack, so see there I have a big scrap left over and here I have a little. And I'm going to show you how to use both of those in the quilts coming up um, in future Wednesdays. So now I'm going to continue with the right side. And I'm putting the 60 right in the tip and putting the line right over the seam. Now I have another line to help guide me. And that is keeping where I've already cut, keeping the outside edges of my fabric block square. So I want to keep it square and I want to keep that fourth of an inch. And that's the main thing I'm, I'm working with. So once again, I have a little scrap and I have a bigger scrap. And I'm going to keep turning and I'm going to use the right side of my 60 and I'm going to do it on every corner for all of the blocks in this one stack. So now here is my last one. Continue working with the right side of your 60. There we go. Okay, so there is one doing a jingle. And you can see how it looks just like that one. Now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to use the left side of our 60. So we use the right side. Now we're going to use the left side. <clears throat> so there's the tip of my 60 in the tip of my nine patch corner. The left of my 60 is lined up on the seam. This is my first cut, so there's no other line to look at. I'm going to make my cuts. Continue doing each corner and doing the left side of your 60 and come in here and look and make sure your block is staying as square as possible. So depending on your sizing, you know, it's not that it lines up perfectly with the line, but that the fabric and the lines look parallel or even or neat. And I'm keeping these little scraps separated because that will help me when I get ready to do my next project with those little leftover scraps. Question. Did you sew the long strips on the side on top of one block and on the bottom for the other block? So when you're sewing your strips on, it doesn't matter what size you're, what side you're doing first because um, all four of mine are the same color. Now, if you were working with some different color combinations, um, if you go in, then it would make a difference on what colors were where. For example, one of the ones I was looking at, let's say that I was going to do blue on these two corners, I would have a blue strip and a blue strip across from it. Now, my nine patch in that particular example was the same, so it didn't matter if it was these two or these two. But if your nine patch is different colors for the design you're working on, then it could be important if your blue is here or if your blue is here. So if you're doing different colors um, and different um, color transformations that you see from that Jack's chain on Pinterest, you're really going to have to to pay very, very close attention to where you're putting the color and onto what side of your, of your square so that your designs turn out. Because as you can see um, on the two different um, ones, you know, if I had, you know, the blue here and the blue here, it's going to give it a different look, and that may be what I want. But on the other hand, I maybe want these two to be the blue. And when we look at our big quilt up here, and we look at the circle um, that it makes, see how this is the row that we're working on here, and that same row is here. So, and it's a different row in here, but see how the inside of those nine patches circle together to make a circle. So that's one circle that you can make. And then uh, see how the opposite color then circles down here on another one. So that's another circle you can make. But if you keep this tall wedge part the same, 
you could make this a big heavy circle through here. So in looking at the other color combinations on the Pinterest website, there were three designs that I thought, okay, those would be the easiest to make. One is what I'm calling the two color, like I have here, just the two main colors. Um, I'm not really counting that one right now, but the two main colors here, that is, um, or I guess the three main colors, this is the easy version to do. Also, if you're doing a two color, like if you want to make like a blue and white one or a red and white one or a black and, you know, hot fuchsia or whatever, the two color quilts were really, really stunning and the circles really jumped out and um, just really, I, just really was beautiful with just the two colors that you used. And then another one was a scrappy version. If you just use scraps, and make sure that you have a good contrast. So that means your nine patches are scraps. Make sure you have a good contrast to your background. Those were exquisite, beautiful quilts. Um, the scrappy ones, the two color ones, and then this one that has what I call the two main colors of circles going on in it. So hopefully that helps. And, and uh, like I said, go to Pinterest and look at those colors and see which ones you know really uh, spark your interest. And when you get ready to make it, you know, use that text number 817-713-2879. Snap me a picture of the one that you want to make and your colors, and I'll be more than happy to work with you on that so that you can get your colors where you want them to be. Yes? Okay, so the jingle block, is it use the 60 in the corner and the right side 60 on the seam, and then the jangle use Um, yes, basically your, your question, the answer to that is yes. Um, you can, it doesn't matter if the jingle is the left side of the 60 or if the jangle is the left side of the 60, as long as, because you're going to have two equal stacks. So, um, but I did try to make sure that in the pattern, the way that I wrote it, that those were consistent, that if I talked about this one as the jingle and it turned one way, that I always referred to that one as the jingle and if and the the right side um, or the other one that the jangle so when you look at that in your pattern I tried to keep all of that consistent so for those of you that were thinking of it that way that this is the jingle and that's the jangle then it would be consistent in your pattern okay all right so let's make this last trim and if you have some questions go ahead and get those in either on the text number 817-713-2879 or on um, the comment section, okay? All right, so those are my little leftover pieces and I'm gonna tell you uh, what I'm gonna do with those um, here in a little while. Okay, so you're going to, for the queen size quilt, you're gonna have nine rows of these and you're going to have 10 in a row. And these are a little bit more than six inches, I think. Let's see what they are. Six and a half inches approximately is what they are cut. So if you were trying to figure size, you would figure six inches on that row. And so that would help you if you wanted to make it a king size or a smaller size, that would help you to know that every six inches you can get bigger or every six inches you can get smaller. And that's on the width of your quilt. And then on the, the uh, length of your quilt from top to bottom, this row that we're working on is the six inch sewn, six and a half cut, but then the alternating ones are a five inch cut, a four and a half. So you can uh, make your quilt taller or longer uh, in four inch sections or in six inch um, sections. And I think it's good to start your quilt with this main jingle jangle row and finish your quilt with the jingle jangle row, not to finish it on the secondary row, which we're gonna show um, next, okay? All right, so if you have any questions about these, and notice when you put these together, see how um, two come together. And with my pattern, I started with this one up here in the top left corner, which is that short side of the um, triangle unit. And so we did two just like this, and then two, two, two for a total of um, 10 going across. So notice how that on these two, you want these two to match. And when you sew your next um, 
and you're going to do these in sections of two like this and then when you start to sew these sections together notice how you want these two corners to match up and also notice how you have the deeper V and then you have the wider V and they alternate because in this shorter V like you see here and like you see here, that's where the next row is going to connect, and you're going to connect these two corners together. And it's really much easier to connect the corners than what um, you think. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit. Okay. Now the next nine patch section you're going to make is all um, of the red check, because those are going to connect in this row where the deep V is. So those are going to go together like that and you're going to have a rectangle piece in between and then you're going to have a piece on the end to finish it out. So let's look up here at the quilt and let's look at what we've got. So <clears throat> when you're looking at the main row of the Jingle Jangle, notice how I started with um, that one in the corner and so when you do the row above it, which is the red check, you have, here is your, here is your row right here. So when you do the red check one, notice how you have four in a row, and these in between here um, are all one size, and these on the end are longer. And then when you come down here and make the next row, which is all dirt, you have the same size of rectangles in here that you did up here, but on the end, you're going to have a smaller rectangle instead of the big long one, you're gonna have a vertical one. So you're working on your jingle jangle rows, and those are all the same throughout the whole quilt. And then you're working on these, where you have five of the nine patches, and you have four rows of that, and then you're working on these, where you have the four red check patches, and you have four rows of that. Now, when you get ready to sew them together, sew them together in rows. Put two together like this, which is I call the red check section, and put two together like this, that is your dirt floral. And then you can put these two to these two, and then two more and two more. You don't want to, um, um, when your quilt starts growing and it starts getting really big and heavy, you don't want to take like one row and sew it on, you know, say you've sewn six rows together, you don't want to take one row and sew it on that sixth row because all of those rows keep being handled over and over again. And it's going to, it, it, the weight of the quilt can help pull the quilt um, out of shape or out of size. So put two rows together, put two rows together, put two rows together, and then go back in and put those sections of two rows together. And then take another two rows and put those together and then another two rows and put those together. Then you can you know, start putting uh, to where now you have four rows together and set it aside. And then four rows together and set it aside. That way you're handling your quilt and your fabric in the least amount um, of, of handling. Hopefully that makes sense so that you're not over handling. Because if you start with the top row and you just keep adding another row and another row to it, by the time you get down you know, to your eighth row, those previous rows have been handled way too many times. And if you've ever wondered why your borders don't fit or your quilt is misshapen, um, it, it could be in the way that you're handling it as you're putting all those pieces together and you have too much um, weight on your quilt. So let's see, um, I've got a part of this row put together. So I actually have all of my quilt done except for the last two rows because those pieces are down here. Uh, that I'm showing you. So I want you to see here how, um, see how you want, if the red check is at the top of your jingle jingle row, then your row here would be with your red check so that all of those connect and touch. And then of course your row down here would be with your nine patches that are all dirt. And notice how in this row, of course, I think I said we needed four of these because uh, you know the sequence of this up and down and then down here uh, with the dirt uh, Nine patch you're going to need five of these in your rows because you're going to go on out Now let's look at the quilt up here again. I thought about how What if I wanted to complete this circle that's on the outside edge? 
if I wanted to complete the circle, then I would do one more um, nine patch here and then do like these are big solid rectangles. You could do a vertical big solid rectangle. But when I actually thought about doing that and drawing it out for the extra work, to me it didn't add anything to the quilt or have any pizzazz. You have to have a start and a finish somewhere. And so when you have that continuous circle, it kind of works that way. Now there might be one quilt on Pinterest that you find that has a real crisp, clear white background to it. It has scrappy kind of jewel tones or more vivid um, um, colors for your nine patches in it. And it just kind of, um, stop, it stops just like this. And I really liked the way that that one, the way that the motion and the movement went through the quilt. It was really amazing how you, when you look at it, you really can't tell where, how you would make that quilt and where it stops and it starts. So hopefully this has been interesting and fun for you to think about the jingle and the jangle and how these go together. Now, looking down here at the board again, in the traditional quilt world, they wanted all of this to be one big piece and it was, you know, um, what is it, oct how many sides? One, two, three. It would be an octagon with eight sides to it and all of this was hand set in and hand pieced and really quite, um, quite complicated and would be a beautiful quilt, but take a lot of work. It'd be one that you would have to come keep coming back to and kind of eating on it a little bit at a time to get it all made. So in thinking about the trimming of this one, um, I think about how you can put anything in the middle. It doesn't have to be a nine patch. It could be a churn dash. It could be a star. Think about if you wanted to put a star here in the middle. Let's look back up here at the quilt. So think about every one of these as a star that is spinning and turning through the quilt. So that's your key or your, uh, your tip or your hint on what we're going to do with our little leftover pieces. We're going to work on that star that I love so much. And if you have the Americana pattern, then the, all of those different sizes of stars are in that little pattern. Or if you have the reference book, there is uh, a little star with an option one in the middle, which would really be great. Um, kind of gives me just an idea of what if we use just a normal star in here that had a plain square in the middle and what if these had uh, the star with the option one in the middle what kind of extra pizzazz would that be to add that extra color and design possibility of an option one in there five pieces in the middle instead of just one plain square so those of you that are familiar with that pattern that it's probably a little bit more clear to you on um, how that what the difference is on that. So um, either the Americana pattern is what we're going to use with our scraps to work on those little stars. Also um, in the Maley Women book, so this one here is the Maley Women book. If you don't have this one, we're going to start teaching out of this one as the summer continues. And one of those quilts is Southern Skies. So I want you to look over here at Southern Skies and I want you to look at these little flying geese in here. You can make your, use your scraps from this one for your flying geese here in the southern sky. So we're going to work on that one too. And that one looks like a complicated design, but once again, we break it down to where it's very easy. Now I want you to notice this one here. This one is, um, this one is called Star Dance. So every row is um, a jingle. And then the next row, every one of them is a jangle. And I want you to notice how these, when you sew the rows together, how it comes through and makes this funny shape right there. So you don't get those perfect um, um, tops or those wider uh, rooftops. You have more of a jagged edge where the, where the blocks come together. So you can see how you can put anything in the middle from the nine patch to the star, a churn dash, any little square block that you want can go in the middle. If you use a plain square in the middle, in the Maley book, there's a quilt called Monkey Tails. Let me see if I can find it. And it's really a great one for this option 60. We don't teach, uh, um, I haven't done a lot of videos with the option 60. Um, and it's really just the, the twist. It's really just a great one and a fun one to do. So, um, there's one in here called Lickety Split, and it's a great one for scraps. 
lickety split on page 98 and uh, you could do it with two colors and then the next one is called uh, monkey tails and um, in this one here you can see how it makes kind of a wonky star and it's a really simple great one to do and those are the two main ones in here and it just makes it um, think about if you um, sew around it again and do the twist again do you see how this just kind of starts to spin let me see if I have um, a twist in my option overview book okay so here's option 16 the twist which is basically what we're doing and this one we're just would keep the blacks on the black side and the reds on the reds do a two color and you can see how you could just keep going and this would just be like um, a funnel or a tunnel that you would just really radiate and go down and it would spin and spin and spin so option 16 is really a fun fun one to do and a fun one to learn and a fun one to get um, acquainted with um, do we have some questions Steve I'll check our. No. So one, uh, this one here, she said she'd need 86 inches wide to cover her deep mattress and blankets. Is it possible to increase the width? Yes. You can um, remember that the width is easily increased in um, um, six inch uh, sections because you're jingling your jangle is six inch. So you can keep increasing it in six inch sections and uh, for your um, length, it can increase in the six inch and then in the five inch. So that would be 11 inches. You pretty much would have to add um, two, a row of each to finish out that circle. So that would be 11 inches that you could add pretty easily. So hopefully that helps, um, Nancy. And, um, Let me see what else. I think those are all that are on the um, text line right now. Do you have any questions, Steve? No, that's it. Okay, so make sure you save your little pieces, keep them organized. You can see here how I have a little box or a basket and keep them all stacked up in your sizes. Um, I, these are just whatever the width was, like when I was cutting a fabric, if I had a little bit left, I saved all of those. You're going to have some little pieces like this left over from your uh, rectangle sections that you sew and um, some of your nine patch um, units. So save all those. Now, some of the Wednesday teachings that we're going to do, um, remember we talked about how to take an old cash register tape roll and some of you got some of these in your orders in January and some of these leftover pieces and scraps that you have. You can see how I already have it trimmed up here, but we're going to talk about how to sew these on. Just whatever they are, you don't have to go back in and trim them. After you, When you're sewing them on, they look kind of crazy like this, and then you just go back in and square them up with your paper. You can use your computer paper. Um, you know, in the olden days, they used newspaper, but we're going to go in and use these. And look at these uh, leftover little nine patch sections at the end, or maybe those orphan ones that didn't turn out nice. You can use them on there too. And this is great for to build uh, um, string blocks, um, center units, um, sashings, uh, borders. And you can also use a water soluble, um, um, I guess an interfacing that you can buy at sewing stores. And then that way you can just wet this or wash it and it all evaporates and goes away. You can also, you know, go in and cut and clip those out or pull them off. See how you can just pull them off after you get them sewn on. It kind of makes a perforated edge. So those of you that are into your scraps, we're going to do some of that and have some ideas that's coming up. We're going to do um, our leftovers. I'm going to do mine with a star. I'm also going to take some of my leftovers that I've had uh, for my... Um, southern sky so those are some things that are coming up now um, as far as our fabric promotion goes for those of you that don't know uh, you can order uh, five yards or more 
of our Tattered and Torn. So that's the Old Glory Blue, the Freedom Red, the Kettle Black, the Dirt, which is what I use today, or the Tan. And those are the Tattered or Torns. So you can order five yards or more, and you can get those um, at um, a discounted sale price. Also, any order that's $150 or more, you're going to get free shipping. If you're out of the country, then they do a prorating type discount for your shipping. So think about a Maley book, a shortcut binding tool, a nine patch ruler, um, a diamond book. Think about something that you don't have that you've wanted to add to your arsenal of, um, of the square and square system and get in on that uh, free shipping for your $150. And remember that all of our fabrics go together and that these are the basics that we use in everything. So really getting a 10 yard piece of dirt or, um, or tan or even the blues or the reds, even our newer fabrics, our new fabrics that aren't even here yet that will be coming later in the year, all of these reds, blues, blacks, and these two lights are ones that we use in with our other prints. And um, so you, this, you know, this is the only time that you'll really find them on sale or at a better price is when we get the big shipment in for a week, two weeks, uh, we run the promotion. And this one's going to go two weeks. So it'll go to, um, to that last weekend in April is what I think it is. Sunday at midnight. Okay. Now Not let's. Okay. Uh, for those of you that have been watching our Wednesday webinars, this next quilt was one that we did a couple of weeks ago, and it is called Crazy Nine Patch, and this is the blue floral version. And I want you to notice again, this is our dirt tattered and torn. If you if you like the Abby's wedding quilt, that was the red, um, the freedom red, and the uh, tan one. And so, uh, you know, I just don't want you to miss out on an opportunity to be able to um, lock in on that $150 order, free shipping, or any of these basic and backgrounds. Because all the quilts that we're going to work on and that we have worked on in the past year use this fabric and we'll continue to use that as our new stuff comes. Um, and I have a couple of things I want to show you here at the end. We have been working on... You know, after doing square and a square for over 30 years and quilting for 40 years, we have made a lot of quilts. And usually when we get fabric in, we make a quilt up to show you about it or if I'm working on a book or if I want to show a new option. So it's come time to sell some of the quilts. So with each webinar here, the last couple of ones, I've been showing you some quilts and giving you some really good prices on those for those of you that want to take advantage. A lot of them, uh, like one quilt that we sold on Monday, I think the kit for it was $79 and I sold the whole quilt quilted and everything for $95. So uh, some good prices on that. So this one, let me get my sheet out that has my pricing on it. This one is called uh, Miss Patchwork. It's 60 by 84 and it's $295. It's quilted and everything. And this one is called Miss Perfect. So I'm going to hold it up and this is like half of it. And so this one's Miss Perfect and it's $295. It's 60 by 84. It's very soft and cuddly. Um, ready to ready to go. This one uses option 39. It's um, 52. No, it must be 42. I don't think it's 52. Anyway, it's tabletop size. No, it's 27 by 27. And it is um, $95. And it uses the pinks and the reds. And this is the trumpet block. And I want you to look at this beautiful uh, border with the trumpet block. It just kind of looks like a ribbon ribbon turn and I'm going to hold it up big here now so you can see all of it and that's the pink trumpet and then this one uses our um, red Civil War it's a lap quilt and it's 52 by 64 and it's 195 and it has some beautiful quilting in it 
and it uses that uh, blue Civil War toile. I'm sorry, the, we've, you've seen some in the blue Civil War, and this one is in the red Civil War. And this one's called Disappearing Star in the book, and it's the option two where you just sew around it two times and put a focus fabric with it. We do a lot of this one. So it's taller than I am and almost as wide as what my arms will go. So a great lap quilt or throw across the back of a couch. And that one has not been washed yet. And then we have, um, this is a quilt top. It's just the top. It's a, it's a large quilt. Um, you know, I'm saying full to queen size. I'm, I would have to measure for those of you that are interested. I don't have the measurement down here. Oh, I do, 80 by 90, so that's a queen size. And this is Homestead Star. It's made out of our blue Civil War soldier fabric. And the, we the this tobacco one in here is our weapons. And this was one of our tattered and torn, it's called paper bag. We don't have that one anymore. So this one is a quilt top only, 80 by uh, 90 and it's 295 so uh, the kit for this one was like 200 dollars uh, $200, so it's an excellent price this one is a star flower we have um, star flower is one of our real popular uh, patterns we always uh, make up a quilt in the newer fabrics with star flower this one is quilted beautifully it is 64 by 78 and it's 295 and it has not been washed. So that's a, a really great one. And um, this one is $20. It's the Fall Table Runner. It's 11 by 21. This one is a larger table runner. It is uh, 21 by 45 and it's $75. This one is Sassy Star, really pretty. It look great on this green table in here. I maybe need to keep that one. And then this is a um, Christmas one. It is 40 by 70, $195. So here's the uh, bottom half of it. And then here is the top half. So these quilts, these quilts are not on the website, so you'll just have to text us on the text line or email us, and uh, we'll look at the timestamp. If there's two people wanting it, the one that has the earliest timestamp that uh, requested it, then that's how we decide who gets it. So um, I hope you've enjoyed our lesson today. Remember 817-713-2879 if you need help during the week on anything that you're working on. Um, today was Jingle Jangle. You can order the kit. Um, and if you order the backing with it, then you'll save $18. If you go in and order the fabric individually, you'll save $17 on the dirt. So it depends on if you want backing or not, which is the best way for you to order. If you order the fabric individually, you'll need to make sure you order the pattern to go with it because it's not as a kit. And um, don't forget about the promotion for the $150 uh, free shipping, mailing book, shortcuts, all of that. Any questions, Steve? Nope. Nope? Okay, I think we're done for today. Hope you have a happy Wednesday and happy spring. It's now April. I think everyone's really been looking forward to some better weather in their area no matter where you're at. So those of you that are Block of the Week, I'll see you Monday. It's not too late to, late to join our Block of the Week. You can go to our website and do so. And uh, anytime you want to join the Premium Club, just request information on our subscription for that Premium Club and we'll send you out the details on it. The Premium Club um, has a Facebook page and all of the teachings go on there and you can watch them um, anytime and just um, binge on them all that you want so that you can learn and become 
the best um, piecer that you can and become a master quilter. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.